Aquatic biomes account for the largest part of the biosphere in terms of area and they're characterized by physical factors such as salinity, temperature and availability of light. Unlike terrestrial biomes, aquatic biomes do not correlate with latitude, largely because a single aquatic biome, the ocean, takes up 75% of the Earth's surface. Ecologists differentiate between two types of aquatic biomes, freshwater and marine biomes, on the basis of physical and chemical differences. For example, marine biomes have average salt concentrations of 3%, whereas it is less than 0.1% for freshwater biomes. Marine biomes cover most of the Earth's surface and include oceans, coral reefs, and estuaries. Marine algae provide most of the world's oxygen supply and take in large amounts of carbon dioxide. The evaporation of seawater provides rainwater for the land. Unlike marine regions, freshwater makes up a small percentage of Earth's total water supply and includes lakes, rivers, and wetlands. The chemical makeup of a freshwater biome is linked with that of its surrounding soils and plant life. The close proximity of freshwater biomes to human development makes them specially vulnerable to pollution and overuse. Both freshwater and marine biomes are stratified into layers. Photosynthetic organisms need sunlight, so they are restricted to the shallow photic zone, the upper portion of an aquatic environment where light can penetrate. The benthic zone is comprised of water from near the surface down to the deepest depth, where little, if any, light reaches. These zones hold different organisms based primarily on their temperature and sunlight needs. The deep, dark, cold regions of the ocean generally have fewer organisms than the shallow, warm regions. Let's survey some of the major aquatic biomes, starting with freshwater biomes. Lakes are standing bodies of water, usually freshwater. They're stratified, resulting in warm, shallow waters and cold, deep waters. Salinity, oxygen and nutrient levels vary among lakes and also with the seasons. Some lakes are clear, low in nutrients and high in oxygen. Other lakes are murky and low in oxygen. This situation arises when urban and agricultural runoff leads to eutrophication. Eutrophic lakes are rich in nutrients, which leads to algal blooms. This in turn leads to the depletion of oxygen in the water, affecting aquatic life. Rivers and streams are part of the freshwater biome. They're defined as flowing bodies of fresh water. They usually begin at a source in higher, cooler climates than their mouths, which is where they empty into large bodies of water, such as oceans. Wetlands are areas that are completely saturated with water, either periodically or permanently. Wetlands are ecologically important because of their ability to improve water quality by filtering pollution from water. Wetlands are teeming with photosynthetic organisms and have high productivity. Unfortunately, wetlands face destruction mainly due to human activity, such as the draining and filling of wetlands for urban development. An estuary is the location where a river meets the ocean, thus it is a place where fresh and salt water mix depending on the tides. Many organisms that reside in estuaries must be able to tolerate a wide range of salinities. Examples of such organisms include mangrove trees and blue crabs. Nutrients flowing in from the river contribute to the high productivity of estuaries. Grasses and phytoplankton are common in these biomes, as are many species of invertebrates, fish and birds. This makes estuaries a popular feeding place for humans and marine predators alike. Similar to wetlands, these highly productive biomes are in danger because of habitat loss through urban development by humans. Intertidal zones occur at the transition between land and sea. As the tide rises and falls, the intertidal zone is cyclically exposed to air and direct sun or submerged in water. Elevated portions of the zone are exposed to air more of the time and lower portions are submerged in water more of the time. As a result, the distribution of species in the intertidal zone is stratified based on each organism's physiological constraints. Algae and seagrass are the primary producers in this biome. Organisms that are able to attach to rocks are common because they can avoid being swept away by the tide. 
In addition, the tide delivers food, so organisms can remain in one place. Sea anemones, urchins and sea stars are commonly found in intertidal zones. This zone is the marine biome most accessible to humans, and as a result, it is greatly affected by pollution and urban development. The largest of all biomes are the open oceans that cover most of Earth's surface. Close to half of all global photosynthesis is completed by huge masses of plankton floating in the ocean. The open ocean is also home to large schools of fish, sea turtles, dolphins and whales. Sadly, despite the vast size of this biome, pollution and overfishing has had a major impact on fish populations, depleting fish stocks in all Earth's oceans.